put migrants in a hotel there by the name of uh, Stradi Park. It's a Stradi Park hotel. Uh, they basically lined up. They demonstrated for days and days and days on end. We played you a little video earlier uh, of their love for Talk TV, which is very nice. Richard's here. Um, what an extraordinary story. A very story. good morning to you, Mike. Yes, so uh, I went to Thlenethly yesterday, yeah. and it was remarkable. It was really, it was a great experience to see... Uh, residents, concerned residents mm. in a local community actually standing up against the government, standing up against the Home Office, yeah. standing up against this illegality and, and basically saying enough is enough. Right. What's remarkable about this is that the access road into the hotel, and yeah. this is a, a a big hotel, it's sort of the premier hotel. It was hotel. a very good local hotel, it's, wasn't it's it? It's a very good hotel uh, that um, uh, is, is very much respected and used by the locals a lot. The access road is actually owned by one of the neighbours. Right. It's an unregistered piece of land owned by one of the neighbours and they've previously granted rights of access to the hotel mm. owners. Right. So the neighbour has withdrawn the rights of access very sensible. to the hotel, which is a very sensible thing yeah. to do. Slightly unique situation. Right. And then what they've done is they've uh, brought in some huge, huge blocks. I think you may have a picture of me standing on one of these blocks yeah. with, uh, with the... Uh, um, uh, the residents. Yeah. So they put that to block the road. Mm. They've then got tents, which they've also put in the road, and they're carrying out a, a shift system, a rotor, so that people are there 24 7. Right. People are sleeping overnight. It's wonderful. The community can all come together with this. People have brought food, uh, sleeping bags. Right. So eight to ten people are sleeping overnight yeah. uh, in the tent. And tents. basically, what's happened here is that the government has, without really telling anyone in the neighbourhood, telling the community, we're taking over this hotel, we're going to fire all the people that work there. That's right. Well, uh, they've been fired. Right. We're going we're gonna to give the control of the hotel to presumably a contractor, whether to, it's to one of the big, uh, one Woodrow, of the big, uh, whether it's or them or, or Capital Circa. Like and so a hundred people, a yeah. hundred people from the locality have all lost their jobs, right. decent jobs, uh, and, you know, this is outrageous, and no one's talking about this enough. Mm. Up and down the country, the thousands and mm. thousands of local people yeah. who've lost their jobs as part of this, and they may well then have to sign on benefits, so the cost to the taxpayer increases, mm. and the impact on the community. And so, therefore, quite rightly, the people in Thlenethly, the good people there, have said enough is enough. They've looked for uh, some support from their local mm. MP, one near Griffiths, oh, yeah. who said... Uh, absolutely nothing. He's basically said, uh, you've just got to accept it. Get on with it. Uh, as though, you know, don't whinge, don't whine, you've yeah. just got to accept it. And the people have said, no, we're not going to accept it. We're going to say enough is enough. Right. We're standing in the way. I think this is a defining and moment. We haven't been asked. I think you're absolutely right. People have already started saying that to me today, that, you know, the Welsh have shown the way uh, to what we should be doing here. Let's have a look. I'm here in front of the Strade Park Hotel in Flanethley. And as you can see, there's a significant demonstration of local people who are demonstrating against the plan to have some 300 asylum seekers brought here. And the reason is that they think that it's unfair, it's unjust. The first thing that's already happened is that some 100 people locally have already lost their jobs who worked in this hotel, which is the biggest hotel in the area. And that's not right, that's not fair. But also, what we've got here is neighbours to the hotel who actually own the access land, they've said, enough is enough. We're not going to allow access into the hotel. Local people are sleeping overnight, ensuring that there is no access to this hotel. This is a local community that is standing up to Westminster, standing up to the Prime Minister and saying, enough is enough. We want to stop the boats. We want all the asylum seeker applications, the backlog, to be dealt with urgently, immediately. It's not fair. It's not right. But the good people here, they know that actually it's only Reform UK that will stop the boats. It's a fascinating story. And as you were saying, uh, Richard, they have for the moment anyway, sort of chased away the people who were occupying the hotel and trying to set it up before, because the migrants no one, haven't actually been moved no in No one right? should underestimate the determination mm. of the good people of Flanethley to ensure that this doesn't happen. And from everything I've heard, uh, they will stay there for as long as it yeah. takes until this proposal is stopped. And I think it's really important. The idea that you can sack a whole group of mm. local staff, local workers from the local community and bring in a bunch of cleaners from Birmingham yeah. 
is absolutely outrageous. It is. It really is. Because those people presumably will live in the hotel, um, they will stay in that hotel for as long as... That's um, right. Whilst I was there, yeah. so a guest arrived right. with a voucher to use the hotel to stay overnight and, and to use the spa. Because it's so recent, right. people haven't been told, they just shut the thing. Unbelievable. I mean, it's, this is, and this is going on all over the place. Mm. Well, I think there's somewhere in the region of four to 500 hotels that have been commandeered at up least, and down the country right? at least. that we know of. And as you say, nobody is ever asked. There's never any kind of consultation process, it seems to me. All I hear is that people ring into my show from time to time and say, well, we were going to have a 65th party at this they hotel. Were. It's been cancelled. Uh, we tried to book um, a wedding reception. It's been cancelled. You know, it goes on and, all the And time. these people are doing it out of the, uh, their own passion, yeah. uh, from their heart, because they live locally. Very occasionally, uh, some, some protesters from sort of the other side of the debate will rock up. Yeah. Uh, they're students, paid right. from one of the local universities, probably at Swansea, pay 20 or 30 quid yeah. to rock up for a few hours, wave a few placards, and then disappear. They don't right. really know what they're there for. Right. Um, this is, I think it's really significant, and uh, I think many people up and down the country can draw a heart, as you say, yeah. the Welsh are leading the way on this Absolutely. Spot. Well, we spoke to um, the, the Voice of Wales, um, um, the journalists who were covering the story last week, um, and they told us that they're very determined, and at the moment, I think, the um, situation is that the people who were inside the hotel have left, and there was great cheers that went up as they watched the, the, the final Range Rover leaving the premises, you know. So I presume at the moment, the it's, premises as are I, empty, As right? I understand, it's completely empty, they're not going to let anybody in, and this will go on, I think, until the Home Office uh, ag admit and agree yeah. that that hotel will not be used right. and it should be reopened. And it might well be that because of, it, uh, of the difficulties that they're having, the Home Office might just give up and just go, well, if we're going to face this much opposition, maybe we should just find somewhere else. I certainly hope so. I mean, we all know the real the real answer. I mean, you've got the barge appearing off uh, of Portland today. Yeah. That's like one day's worth 509. of arrivals. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's hard to believe, isn't it, a boat that size that can house 509 people only actually covers the numbers coming in one day on yeah. these so-called small boats. Well, that's the whole point. That That's the madness of the whole situation. I've said it before, I'll say it again. This only stops when you pick people safely out of the boats and you take them back to France. Nothing else will work. The no. Court of Appeal, the Rwanda scheme, right. uh, I'm afraid well, you've always had... Migrant... You've been over-optimistic about Rwanda. I have. I'm terrorist. pleased to see that you've slightly changed your position on that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm trying to be decent. I do, I do think that if the Rwanda plan had worked it would have been a deterrent yeah I, but, I, but i don't see it ever working I, I don't think it'll ever come into fruition yeah i don't think if it's two or three or four or five hundred out of forty yeah. fifty thousand it's just not a deterrent right and then you've got this migration uh, it's now an act, I think, as of today. Yes, as it's now become an bill. act. And again, it gives the government power to detain people who have come here illegally and deport them. But you and but I again, both know we, we that know they can't that with, them. The, with the existing staff in the Home Office, nothing will no. change. Nothing at all will change. You need a complete and utter reset with a whole new group of uh, people in a new yeah. Department of Immigration that know how to quickly process them, say you're rejected, right. and then you can deport them. I'm not accepting this stuff, that you can't deport them. The Labour government 15 years ago, for heaven's sake, yes. and I'm not one to normally give them credit, they were deporting 30,000 yeah. people, not to the EU, but to other countries right. from where they came. So and we, and we know that other countries in Europe can deport people. I think somebody told me exactly. yesterday, I wasn't able to check if it was true, but I think Norway deported a bunch of people to, back to North Africa and yeah. just said they're not living here anymore. This is a nonsense perpetuated by the left, yeah. who are all part of the vested interest who are making a great deal yeah. of money, whether it's the lawyers, whether it's the outsourcers, whether it's mm. the hotel companies, whether it's the charities. I tell you what, much more money is being made by the vested interests in this debate, this side of the channel, than the horrific people smugglers on the other side yeah. of the channel. It only stops when you pick up and take back. Exactly right. And here's the other thing that, that they've done now to sort of kibosh their own immigration bill, which is to say, well, we now don't have enough bricklayers and we don't have enough plasterers. So if you're a smart lefty lawyer, you're going to tell these guys coming from Eritrea Absolutely. and Syria, just tell them you're a bricklayer. Yeah, I'm a bricklayer, I'm a carpenter, and you're in. Yeah. Uh, and so and so it goes on. And it's why don't we train up? Make take our a own... look look out for some funny looking walls being built by people who don't know what they're doing. That's going to be my advice. <laughs> a bendy wall. Yeah. That's the top yeah. tip. I mean but it is, it's ludicrous, isn't it? I mean the on one hand we're saying we're gonna control this immigration. And I've said this repeatedly to any politician that will be on here, and I say to them, Well what happens if you do process this one hundred and seventy thousand backlog of people and they all find uh, find that they fail 
the process, what are you going to do then? You can't send them anywhere because they won't do it. So they say. I tell you what, if I was in charge, they would be deported. You can use existing laws. You've just got to have the wherewithal, the commitment yeah. and the determination to do it. And yeah, we should be training our own young people to be tradespeople, mm. whether it's plumbers, yeah. chippies, right. bricklayers. Uh, you know, and and that's, that's what we've always historically have done. Yeah. We should play, should we not, just before we let you go, uh, the other video that we've got, which is of you asking the good people of Thanetley uh, whether they're fans of Talk TV. Absolutely. Uh, which I rather like. This is particularly good. Have a look. Well, here we are. We're in the Stradley Park Hotel, just in front of it, in Thanetley. Now, does anyone here listen to Talk TV? Yeah. Wow! There you are. Does anyone listen to the BBC? No! Everyone's on, everyone's on top form today. <laughs> Marvellous. Well done, everybody. Absolutely fantastic. Well, I mean, this tells you, doesn't it, how the, how the country has moved away from the traditional, you know, BBC, ITV model, you know, they're looking for, for, for an answer as to what everything, why everything's going wrong, and they're only getting it from us. That's right, and up and down the country, I'm campaigning. I was up in, uh, uh, where was it, Hartlepool, Hartlepool on yeah. Saturday. And again, people coming up to me saying, love it, you know, listen to you on tour. Yeah. And I, I think that the people, the, the, the figures are being underestimated. Yeah. I really do. Absolutely. Up and down right. the country, the word is spreading. Yeah. It's fantastic. It is, absolutely. I understand you may have picked up a Plank of the Week nomination while you're up there. I have also. More, of that, more of that. More of that later <laughs> in the week, obviously. Richard, good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. And